How you doing? My name's Greg Hill. I'm with Chapman Leonard Studio Equipment, Los Angeles, California. Today we're here to give you an overview of the Olympian II and Olympian I cranes you use for football. Um, every one of these cranes comes with a brochure. Any questions, you can look at your brochure. If not, give us a call. Thank you very much. Okay, this is an Olympian 1. To operate the Olympian 1, you have two switches here, one for drive, one for power. You flip them on, the crane will go forward or backward. We also have, this is the safety horn they use. The brakes are right here. This is a ratchet lock brake system. You can ratchet it down, the crane will stay parked. This is only a temporary parking brake, never to be used for anything else. Okay, coming around here is the arm on this type of crane. You have an arm that goes up like this, not straight up and down. It has a 48 inch platform and a camera mount up there. Okay, now we get down. This crane has a charger. You can turn the pump on, it operates the pump all the time. Okay, it has a charger. It's a uh, 110 AC. You plug it in, you look at the amp meter and see that. Uh, it's putting out amps that might be up around 20 if it's real low. Come back in five or 10 minutes, it will have dropped a little bit. You always wanna make sure before you walk away from the equipment for the night that it is charging. Okay, we have breakers in here for the controller, the charger, the pump. They're self-setting, if it pops up, you just pop it down. You always wanna charge this crane before the game. You never wanna charge it during a game. When when you're charging it during a game, every time you put the power on, it's making the charger overwork, could burn it out. The, uh, then I need to get in and check the batteries. To check the batteries, you pull open this compartment on this crane. We have a hydrometer with each crane. You pop open the battery top, draw fluid out of it, and it will float and it will tell you, you know, like uh, 1225, 1250, 1275, which is, you know, 1250, 1275 is a full charge. You want to try to check every battery before you charge the crane. It'll tell you what state it's in. It also gives you a chance to check the level of the battery. The battery should be filled with distilled water only, about an eighth of an inch under the lip. You don't need any more than that or it will gas and leak uh, battery acid all over everything. While you have this open, you want to check all the electrical connections. Make sure everything's good and tight. Some of these cranes, if you charge them, they can actually overcharge. And uh, <laughs> we've had this happen from time to time. It's not a real common thing. If that happens, you basically go to the crane, and the common thing is the crane won't move. Well, sometimes they'll leave the ratchet lock on. That's the reason the crane won't move, if the brake's down all the way, and it won't move. If that, you'll check that first. If that's not working, then basically what you need to do, is you turn your pump switch on, you go up and down three or four times. What that will do is use juice out of the battery, which tells the computer that your battery charges at a good state so you know the crane will operate. So you go up and down three or four times. Now you hear You hear the pump kick on. That's using battery power. And the batteries a little bit so that the computer will pick up uh, the right amount of voltage and now it will drive itself. 
Like I said before, it's not a real common problem, but it's just something to look for. Now we're going to put it up on a ramp. We're going to put two tires on one side. There we go. And one, uh, one set on the other side. Okay, you have to line up the holes. There's some holes in there. You put the bolt in it. Oh. Go ahead. on the floor. Okay, you can tighten these up pretty tight. 220 to 250 pounds torque on them is what we're looking for. You can actually you can actually stand on the wrench. It wouldn't be too much. Okay, I'm going to take it back down off the ramp. Now we have three tires on one side. Now we're going to go to the other side and we'll put Go to the other side and we'll put a single tire on. Okay, let's go up on the ramp. Okay, now we'll do a single ramp, a single tire on that side. We're just showing you how you can put two tires on or one. <laughs> then again, lining up the lug nuts, get the white, the wheel to seat in. It's usually a good idea if you have a little grease on the. Uh, the cone on the thing and on the threads. Uh, the reason I'm showing you this, this can be operated this way or with two on each side. Um, as long as you're at 48 inches where the platform is on here, you're plenty stable. In some of the stadiums you go in, you don't have much room. That guys run three on one side, two on another. Ready? Okay, now I go up, I come down. Okay, when you're loading these cranes on a trailer, I always want you to use a ramp and a winch. We really don't need anybody driving them up or pushing them up. The winch is a controlled circumstance where safety and it's nice and slow. Always use a ramp and a winch. When you pull it into the trailer, always lash it down to the chassis. You have a ratchet brake that you can set for parking for a moment till you strap it down, release, the ratchet lock brake. We do not want it on during traveling. Okay, another thing you need to do you turn the pump switch off. And what I want you to do is you take the arm up and down until you've exhausted all the hydraulic pressure out of the arm. That way, going down the road, it cannot boom up or go through the top of the trailer or anything. Now I'll just run it up and down until it runs out. And you usually get about three strokes out of this. She's still going, okay, just ran out, you saw it. Now bring it down. 
Now when you bring it down, I want it all the way down until it's out of travel. Some of the guys have been traveling with these, let's say about this high up, and what happens is going down the road, it's pounding on the hydraulic cylinder in here, making oil bypass it. So you always want to exhaust the hydraulic system, bring it all the way down. You'll see it, it'll land, and it can't go no further, it's fine now. Then your pump's off, when you're in a trailer, you want to make sure your drive system is off so that if something were to impact this, it couldn't try to drive itself out of there. I also, on this turret here, if you have the trailer loaded straight on, I want the turret straight forward and locked. That keeps, when you're driving down the road, from the momentum of braking and stuff, from taking the brake out on the turret. So it's always a good idea to have it straight forward like that while you're driving down the road. Okay, now on this crane, on all cranes, we want to check the batteries. Check the batteries on this crane. You pull the side rails off of it. You open the battery compartment. Have your batteries in here. We have a hydrometer with each crane to check the state of charge in the batteries. You put it in. Draw the fluid up and let it float. 1250, 1260 is a full battery. Be careful, this is uh, battery acid and you could get it on your, you know, in your eyes, on your hands. Be careful. You want to fill these batteries. Keep them about an eighth of an inch from the top. Distilled water only. If for some case you couldn't get distilled water and they were down so low they were in the plates, you could put regular water in it to get by so you don't wreck the uh, platelets in the battery. You want to check for all the connections in here. Look for corrosion and rust. Okay, on this crane here, we have a battery charger. It's an automatic charger. You plug it into 110. There's an amp meter. You want your amp meter, and it comes up. If it's low, it might go up to 20 amps. Let yourself have about five or 10 minutes, and then go back and check it to make sure it's still charging. If it's still charging, you're good. You can walk away from the crane. Each one of these cranes comes with an operating manual. It does answer all the questions. If there are any questions, you can always call Chapman and get a hold of me or one of the technicians and we'll help you out. Okay, now let's put the uh, things back on. These are the safety rails, so if somebody were to get here, it keeps them from getting in track of the wheel. Um, I'll show you controls for operating the Olympian 2. This is Olympian 2. It has a platform that goes straight up and down. Okay, you have a drive and a power switch. You turn both of them on. It takes two of them to make it operate. Go forward or reverse. Okay, we have a horn, a safety horn. Okay, this crane has what we call a ratchet lock brake. Ratchet it down. That's a temporary parking brake. Use it just to temporary park it and block it, what have you. Release it. Okay, there's a handle on either side that makes it go forward and reverse. This is a control valve. Makes it go up and down. Okay, you have a pump switch. You turn that on, the pump will run itself automatically. You don't have to worry about anything. It'll take it up to the proper pressure as you go up and down, you hear the pump kick on. We have a ramp that comes out with a crane. 
basically put the ramp under the hard wheel there. You drive up on the ramp. You lock the ratchet brake down. Now you can change the wheel. Okay, these tires, it's very important you get them on good and tight. You have to engage the nuts and stuff. I'll show you that once it gets it off. These uh, tires have a pressure of 40 pounds. We actually have instructions on the side of every Olympian tube that tells you how to install the tires and what pressures to keep them at. And I've had guys call and, and have a flat tire on the back on a steering axle. You could always take one of these off and put it on the back and put the flat up there and it would get you through the game if you had to. Okay, Gary's pulled it off. Now if you see in here, there's holes that line up with the lug nuts there. So when you put it back on, go ahead and put it on, Gary. start tightening it, you have to make sure the lug nuts are engaged so it'll pull it completely in there and engage. Now we recommend these get torqued to about 250 pounds, which with this tool you can stand on it to finalize it and get it good and tight. But there once again, this all needs to be done by hand. Don't use impacts on it or anything like that. He's checking to make sure that it's engaged. Once again, you want these really tight. We recommend about 250 pounds. With that bar, you keep pushing on it like that. Get her good and tight. Voila. She's good. Go ahead and put your thing back on. Okay. Okay, go ahead and pull the rail off. Go ahead and get on the other side. Okay, you have top rails, you have, these are called mid rails right here. Here's your pins, another part of the rail. Okay, go ahead and pull this half over here, not that one. Be good. And flip her up. Okay, this rail, the rail system comes off. You can pull the two sides. They flip up on here. Pin them in place. <coughs> Once you take the wheels off, this whole crane will become 33 inches wide for moving in and out of narrow places or what have you. And then, uh, okay, so go ahead and put the rails back on, fellas. I'm showing you this just to see how it works.
put it out back here. Let me have that one over here. Go ahead. Then on these mid rails, we put one back on this side or that side. Now the top has two pieces on it. You can set it up. They're gonna set it up here. Now the camera was pointing this way. You're gonna have the back railing in that position. And now what they can do, during the game they'll have this off, they can shoot this way. If they wanna change it, they can put that piece over here if they're shooting that way. This part here, is for them to get in and out, to load in and out easily. You can basically go like this, like this. Now you're up in the crane. Then they can close it. Or like me, I'm going to take it back off. Comes a full rim, or full ring for the whole thing. OK, go ahead and put that on. And now it's a full rail. Okay, guys. Okay, now for transporting this crane when you load it up on a truck or trailer to bring it from place to place. You get it up on the truck, you want to use ramps. If you use ramps, you need to use a winch. You can control the movement up or down, make it safe, okay? The, uh, you can put it in position, you can lock the ratchet brake, get it tied down with the chassis, then release the brake. Next thing you want to do, you have to take this arm. You turn the pump off, you run the arm up and down until it runs out of pressure. And I'm going to actually do that right now. I usually get two to three strokes. Okay, now it quit going up. Now I can release it. You bring it all the way down. So when it's riding in the trailer, it's not on the hydraulic cylinder. Okay, that's done. Next thing you want to do is you make sure the power system's off, the drive. The two switches, make sure the pump switch is off. Now you're safe to drive the thing. Okay, so in closing, remember this is a very expensive piece of equipment. Please take care of it. Check the batteries all the time. Load it safely, winch it, tie it down safely. If you have any problems, give us a call. We're more than glad to help you at Chapman Leonard Studio Equipment. And Tally Hope.